storms here. I told you to come. A great a nuclear winter's arrived. I told you it'd come. It's time judgment. He said, let it be light. And so there was light. And let it be Cortina. And so there was Cortina. Let there be Bramble. And so there was Bramble. And on the first day, he created Cortina. And it arrived. And out of the ashes, a new car shall rise. The winters is here, everybody. This is Cortina City. And the storm has arrived. What car should be revealed in episode 41? Under every flash, every roll. Okay, a big warm welcome in to episode 41. In 40, I left you with various things. Let's just see where we went. There's me sandwiches there, I've just had me dinner, things are good. We left you with the engine going in, a little ramble in the, uh, the washing machine, and a few little bits of trimming work, if you recall. We're now on with got the washer jets in the washer tube i've not calibrated them yet but the pipes are in fuse box is finalized i was waiting for a, a clear cover to arrive for that which it did both wipers are on i don't know if that was included in the episode or not can't recall i think it might have been and now the r roof gutter so what we've done with this roof gutter we've buffed this up on the buffing wheel started with uh, three different started with a course wheel and, and um, a black based uh, wax that you use and you build the waxes up. I'll show you the, the buffing wheel later on because we're going to be taking some trim up there to the unit where the buffing wheel is. Suffice to say though that it comes up great and I've managed to straighten out and get rid of most of the dents and scratches on this piece of trim. This is Bramble's original, had got quite a bit of battle scar damage on it but we've managed to fit it. 
okay so and it's clipping in all the way as well even at the troublesome front part I've got a slight kick up on it and a bit of deviation perhaps if I run my fingers behind a little bit but it's fine it's no problem so we've got that we've got what else have we got going on can we really recall we've got these trims here um, remember we left you off doing these so contact adhesive my favorite stuff spray glue strong stuff that's got two that's contact adhesive both faces are done now I'm just going to add the foam backing piece if I got all the way up on that I don't know if I've done enough a big enough patch you know there I could have I could have boo booed you out there if I boo booed you out right two faces then the glue I just needs to tack a little bit and then this goes on we'll do our wrap of our vinyl let me move my vegetarian sandwich box which looks unsightly out of the way this just goes on here like so did I put you on a tripod okay I'm just on a little simple board with trestles because obviously we've hauled everything out of the, uh, the workshop and actually enjoying all the space that I've got now. So two parts go on. Let's get my hands out of the way of the screen. What I do to help you is I'll look at the viewfinder as I'm filming. Not always, but as much as I can. To make sure that you've got at least half decent view. I know you get that wobble there. I've got a little bit of hay fever, so you have to bear with me. Pollen count's high. I don't normally get it, but I seem to have developed it a little bit. Right, we've got to trim this. This foam. Will that my hands ruin the shot? It'll be okay. Is this blade? No, that's dragging. That blade's not loose. We're going to have to get a sharper blade. That is just dragging the foam. Could cut round it with scissors. That would also work. Hold on, I'll be right back. Well... Wow. Another thing that always disappears, and if you find this, is uh, razor blades, they always go. By rows, they always go. Sharp scissors, someone stop, pinch my sharp scissors. I had some proper stainless steel scissors and someone's nicked them. I lent them to someone and they've never given me back. Uh, but I've forgotten who it was I lent them to. Oh, have you just got any scissors? Uh, these best stainless steel, proper, nice Sheffield steel scissors when I'm working with these B&M bargain Chinatowns. Well, cutting this foam doesn't work. It just drags, even with a reasonably sharp blade. So I'm cutting it with scissors. It doesn't need really to have neat cuts on it because it's getting folded back on itself. In fact, you could argue that you should have a little overlap. Cool, that is, that is, it's hard to cut even with the scissors. And I'm not sure which way you, um, you glue this. I've got a feeling I've glued it the wrong side. I don't know though. I might be wrong. It's got a more, of, it's got a more of a material feel to that side. Anyway, it doesn't need to be neat because, although, you know, you're best off always being neat, but because we're, um, we're over-wrapping it now, let's keep you low, low. We've got to get this. This will cut with a blade, and then just, what I'll do, I'll draw around this now. It's gone very blue Peter, hasn't it? These are just donated bits of cloth. Get off! the cloth muff and then we're just going to fold over again contact adhesive is going to be our friend here so it's time to get a pen and mark this out I'm not a trimmer by the way so mark me up mark me down it's Bruce Forsyth's generation game life is the name of the game and we've got to play the game with you so give us a twirl and let's get this underway I'll cut some straight lines in this first right off screen just grabbing a straight edge I don't like having that's one thing that would annoy me is having uh, uneven cut lines even if it's not really required I just I definitely I definitely OCD out on that so cut that out 
and then we've got something better to work with a bit of aluminium trim great for this kind of job so I'm going to draw round this now to get a, a cut pattern obviously that was a straight run so we're heading into that corner spray glue wrap it over we should have a padded uh, pillar trim these are the clips that are in from Bresco there they are they arrived but I've got to say Bresco normally I'm happy with but do you know with the postage and stuff these worked out at nearly two quid each that's ridiculous six qu clips cost me um, two four six eight. yeah two quid each well they're like what's that to you it's like five pence isn't it I was a bit annoyed about that I'm gonna actually ring them because Bresco is, is fantastic here they are there must be some kind of problem or some kind of special reason why these are so expensive compared to everything else I don't know I was very annoyed about it I know I know I, I clicked buy it now I wanted them but I thought wow 13 quid for just a little look look and Bresco are good I am not knocking them right I'll be back I'm just gonna jump <laughs> get to the chopper okay I've outlined that so now I cut that with just enough overlap to get our glue on just give it a, a border there it doesn't have to be fantastic as I said just an oversized piece and then we're going to need some slits in it to create now this is where the trimmer would be able to win over me hands down because I am not I'm just going to work out how it's going to do it. See, this is where you make these funny little incisions and get it right, you know. It is one of those things, look, you know, where you make all those cuts and get it right. But it's going to work this side, you can already see it coming in. But we need to know the correct way to get it. So I'm going to work that out. I don't really know how we're to make the cuts. It's like wrapping presents. I'm not the best at wrapping presents, I've got to say. So I'm going to save myself being embarrassed. I'm going to cut to you when it's done. So I'm going to cheat. I don't want you to see me suffering here. Just I'm not confident with this. I'd like to be a trimmer, you know. Anyway, let's see what I do. Let's see how. Let's, let's see if I can do it. Okay, you're going to just jump straight to it. I've decided you can watch me suffer. I've come up with an idea. So we're, just, we're doing trimming. I put loads of slits in the various parts where it's got to go round corners. I've glued it. So I'm going to try it. And I'll place this in the middle of me marked out template and it should grab. That grabs. I've put a clean board down because you get overspray. So we eat any gluing operation, remove this board and then um, glue. And when you're assembling, put it on a clean, otherwise you'll get glue on the, the clean uh, front of the vinyl. So this should fold over. Try and get it a tight fold and it should just stick down. That bit works. Then try and stretch it in. That bit works. Let's see what that looks like. Oh yeah, that's looking good. Okay, that's looking good. Let's build out from the middle. So I think the camera took a tumble then, but it's still going. Wow. Okay, build out from the middle. Stretch and bring it in. Stretch and bring it in. A little bit of a gap around those trims that needs cutting. Trim clips there. They just need a slice. That would have been handy to do first, but it's, this knife is working on those. So, so let the trim clips sit in. So we've got that bit all right. These straight edges, they're okay. We can get them. Disadvantage of using a, a white board here for assembling this is that the camera's focusing system will overcompensate. That doesn't feel like there's glue on there, but there must be. Yeah, it's just this glue tends to dry off quite quick. This is going to work. 
done about this end this is where I'm going to get tricky at that corner these bits aren't too bad try and pull it across and in will that work? I suppose so yeah this is my first attempt at coach building, trim building don't give up your day job ain't got one right it's just it's just how you finish at the ends it's always I mean these are hidden but I'd like to get it right there I knew I'd have trouble at the end there'll be a way that needs a little open up there that piece taken out so that that piece won't come out trim down so it's got a gap for this to go into without breaking it that gets that bit that just leaves the top fold that piece over that just leaves that corner <clears throat> it's not too bad a finish probably not quite as good as Ford's and then we've just got to trim that down so that that fits it's just that end little piece which that's where the art is in that end little piece this down this end is pretty straightforward you do get a point where two pieces are in the way of each other down here it's not as easy as the trimmers make out well the trimmers probably don't make out that it's easy you get the idea of what we're trying to do we're making them finishing pieces and I'm trying to get it so they look something half decent I'll keep on going a couple of little mods to make to get it to work out the way of cutting it round these corners we'll see what it looks like when we fit it okay I am finished with my Cortina City parcel shelf finishing trim piece and that's how it went seems to have worked so I'm going to unfit it see what it looks like okay it's in and it looks nice clipped in so um, I'm quite pleased with my first trim panel that I've made and here's the second one we're making here as we're in the back of the car marked out the buttons through there's the panel just clips in tightly there so we'll pop that back out now get it retrimmed now we know it fits so you just pop your hand in push the clips and you're good to go let's get that trimmed guys and girls out there in Patreon and YouTube land okay marked out ready to cut this foam to go onto there same procedure spray glue cut out our template fold go clip and we're done get this one right in we'll not mess about let's keep moving so C pillar trim C pillar trim where it is C pillar trim parcel shelf trim piece we've spent some time explaining it I think you understand where we're going some of this foam trimmers foam and some vinyl topping okay I've laid all this out over the piece of vinyl the foam stick stuck on and I'm learning ouch that was my knee that just cracked I'm learning how to make it so that it gets easier little bits that you cut out the first attempt wasn't bad I'm going to get a little bit better this time okay so I'm going to cut that glue that and we'll go straight to it getting fitted here we go downtown let's go
just that end to pinch up. It's actually hidden that end, but we'll get it neat. A bit better than the other one, just this middle to do. Shake that round. And that's it. Probably would have left the contact adhesive maybe a little bit longer then. And that's it. Maybe would have left the, the contact adhesive maybe another 10 minutes before. It wasn't quite touch dry. Hence it sort of peels back a little bit before it's had a chance to grab. I think Evo sticks better than this. I don't think that's the best. It's all right, but it's convenient. Depends what you're doing. This is quite tight, pulling around where you need a really good solid grab. If you're just doing light, non non heavy, just surface to surface, that would be all right. But maybe on this stuff, when you're pulling it in really, really tight, you might need a, a better quality little corner exposed there but it's underneath the seat your main runs at top so I'm happy how, how they've come out I'm going to get that clipped in now once it's another 10 minutes and that'll be ready to clip in so that's both of those done we can move on to something else in the project episode 41 then let's keep moving okay all fitted all good on to something else we go I'm not sure what I'm going to do next but there's plenty to do, that's for sure. Okay, with those lovely parcel shelf trim finishes fitted, why don't we get the parcel shelf in, if anything else, just to see how it looks. It's coming up to your screens right now, because it's in the car, freshly painted. But before we do, welcome to the trim department. We've been buffing, and we're going to take you to the wheel buffer in a minute and show you me cleaning up some of these parts. But... I want to take this little opportunity in this episode, which probably isn't as high octane as 40 was. 40 was fun with that. But there's little things going on, like lovely VIN tags to go on. Oh, brand new, reverse printed, reverse stamped, and ready to fit. We've also got the build tag, but that's getting painted in silver, so that's away at the painters. So there's that, but there's trim. Now look. I'm going to answer some questions regarding these finishing windows. Let's take a piece of trim across. Let me find the right one. It is this one. Is it that one? Mm, which one? It is this one. This one goes across. Come across over here and you'll see that we've got a gutter trim. Gutter? A gutter, 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 gutter. We've got a gutter trim fitted. Which we don't like fitting, but it went on okay to be fair. Sorry, battery gone. Recharge, recharge, recharge. Uh, gutter bit, didn't film that bit going on. But what you do, you, um, I'm sure you know this, but you get it and hook it over the top section, then curl it round and then palm it in. There's two types of gutter trim. One slightly wider to accommodate the vinyl roof which is what we needed this is Bramble's original gutter trim that's buffed up and it did to be fair buff up very well you can see we've still got some scratches but it was heavily scratched and if you look on the strip down video you see it was dented I've managed to get the dents out you cannot 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 get that trim because it was only on an XL two door and a GXL two door well they didn't make many Consequently, they're very hard to get hold of. And usually, by the time you do get hold of them on a car, it's 50 years old, it's had roof racks on it, it's had been off and on, not put on properly, because no one ever fits them properly. Well, they do, but not many people do. You've got to get them clean, you've got to warm the vinyl a little bit. I put a bit of silicone on, and you curl it and palm it down. I started at this end, and I have to get it at the right starting position, so that this little trim piece fits nicely at the end this little c-pillar trim 
so I palm that on we kick up a little bit at this end but I'm going to leave it I'm going to be happy with that the way that I built the roof the way that I put the roof on I don't think this is wrong to be fair but it's not quite as symmetrical as the other side is these things I knew about these things I know are difficult people say if they, you know if they see it at a car show and they sort of start zoning in and say oh there's a little little dent there well no problem you find me one of these then a new one and I'll, I'll put it on but until we do we have to go with what we got you have to compromise and this is when you come to unique specific to the model type stuff this is when you've got to start accepting compromise if you want to continue moving on if you say I'll leave the car for another two years while I find the part that's fine but I'm not doing it that way I'm continuing to move on so I've got to go with what I've got now I roughly calculated that I had all the bits and all the trim to do this car and keep the momentum going in but the, those bits in various states of repair some better than others but I knew that I had enough bits that were just salvageable and this gutter trim was salvageable so especially now we've buffed it up it really does look smart so that one's good the other side isn't quite as good let's go around and look at the other side it isn't quite as good as that one but again these were dented they were scratched so you can see here it's been hammered on and this I can tell the evidence of this car because this side was the accident damaged side when in Bramble's life it had been swiped all down here and the garage whoever's done it will have just not took the care that it takes to fit these and they'll have been bashing and hammering them on because they are hard to fit you curl and then you palm down you curl and then you've just got to get them so a dent there and that could have happened when I took it off I, I did try and be careful or it could have happened when they took it off because this side would have been replaced when the car was fixed from its accident round here we fit slightly better than the other side you can see that this one is in the correct place but I didn't want to start denting that roof and that was the way that it went so we have to you know sometimes accept the compromises could I knock this down a little bit well the trims tended to follow it and that's the route that it wanted to go it's, it's five mil difference so I'm going to accept that and I have to sometimes do this so that now takes me to trim down here and we've got the piece to go on and we're just going to show you how that lines up I'll take it off the roof there and look this goes in here let's just change the angle and it, it lands on the C pillar there and joins up and that goes in and that makes a nice chrome surround there see so that's, that's going to look good and that's buffed up very nicely that piece so we've got ourselves one of those very rare again two door specific XL and GXL specific as far as I know so if you, if you said well there is a dent on it see look now the car's going to have imperfections it is not going to be it's going to be under the lights at the NEC show or a car show whatever and I'm not portraying it as per a perfect vehicle what I'm doing is building the best that I can do so people can come and, and pick at it if they want and say oh well that's not right yeah well that's fine because this you have to work with what you've got and that's what you do and that applies to these windows these are fixed windows look okay with fixed rubbers now I have got brand new rubbers that are quite supple look so that was a result getting the brand new rubbers so that's a start but these are fixed windows and this is the fixed trim this fixed trim fits into the recesses on the rubbers here and you assemble it all and, and fit it as one curiously this one's got little spot rivets well they both have the spot rivets have broke on this one but it doesn't matter I won't stop it going in but Bramble originally had opening windows why not fit those well it did have opening windows but one had fallen out and they always did have a reputation for falling out a little hinge glues on the glass here and that detaches and the window tended to fall out and that's what had happened on Bramble at some point and the window was lost whilst you got a chance you could get glass because Pilkington's could have probably made it 
it's no good me having a pair of glass for this in fact actually i have got new old stock opening glass would you believe for this car and the hinges and everything to make the windows open again in fact i've got brambles that side the original piece ready to go back in but this side totally missing but now of course like i said i've got a piece of new old stock glass would be great to fit that but it comes with this trim here and this trim goes over the glass now why can't we use this trim on the openers well it won't work because this trim's designed to go into the rubber whereas the opening type glass trim whilst looks almost identical to this design is designed to slot over the edge of the glass so that the trim can open with the glass so i can't use this on opening windows it's a different shape it won't work it's going to look wrong so because that window fell out it fell out and lost that trim i've got the trim for that side so i can't fit opening windows to bramble because i haven't got the trim i've been trying to find the trim since i've owned the car knowing that one day it would be needed which is probably five years ago and it's still not turned up in fact i bought an entire car just to get that trim a scrap car but it turned out that it was fixed trim and that's what this was from a portuguese donor two-door car it's on one of my videos getting scrapped because it was absolutely rotten it was the one where i pulled the a pillar off with my hand it was that rotten that's the trim out of it fixed trim unfortunately it was an xl with fixed trim you can get openers without the trim and some gts didn't have this top trim on some l's didn't have this top trim on it seems to be that this trim was like a luxury trim for the fixed windows or for you know all the models on gxl openers were rare they are rare they're out there but they're rare so until i can find one there's nothing i can do except put fixed windows in it uh, i can always retrofit the openers it's not out of the world but then you'd need the rubbers because the rubbers for the openers are different as well of course they're not attached to the glass it's a buffer rubber where the glass pinches up against it brambles were okay but they're not the best rubbers they were and they tend to leak so all in all what i'm saying is fixed windows are going in we've got no choice so that's what we're on with i'm going to get the parcel shelf now and just slide it in provisionally and see what we're looking like okay let's go and get that and then we'll start to clean up and buff up this trim here then we'll get the glass guy down alan and we'll fit this rubber that seems all right i think he's going to be happy with the pliability of this we'll clean the glass up it's got some scratches on it again i have no new old stock glass for this and um, unless we can find any fixed new old stock glass we've got to go with what we've got we'll have a look round just in case but i'm going to line up this it, there are some marks on it it's not terrible but there are some marks on it okay so bits and bobs going on another potpourri perhaps let's keep on going and get the parcel shelf in so you know you've got to go with what you got engine bay wise the clarkie's done us a nice curved tube um, a 90 degree there which takes the pipe down to the power steering look and that clears the exhaust so that pipes in and it's just the right length fits in nicely to the power steering altered this bracket someone did mention it to me and they were bang on correct i'm sorry i forgot your name do apologize but yes you left me a comment saying bracket was wrong and you were you were correct in that the bracket fits better that way so that the adjuster line comes in facing off on this side bracket mount for the pump so we've done that started rooting a few cables tidied a few cables up around this side here's our main master fuse that's staying as it is then our feed to the starter motor clipping in at the side there going into its ducting clips onto there and a nice neat factory looking bracket okay these are later type fitments you'd get in 90s cars but they work nice you know it, it makes everything neat there's your cooler pipes don't look too bad i know they're in copper but they've been better in steel but I, I like them they're nice i can live with that um you know they're good they're good tubes 
and they come in ready to receive the flexi hoses just at the end of my hand there water tube going through with another standoff bracket again that wasn't st uh, standard standoff bracket standard it just keeps that pipe neatly going into the heater duct there's that rare hard to find pipe you see them on ebay that goes into your auto choke back round we go another hard to find pipe here loops round i think wayne will be interested in these if he's not got them because i know wayne's chilcott's trying to get his lovely tawny gxl up to the best spec uh, it's already good but he's uh, he's adding to it as we all do we add to our cars and get them better and better um one for wayne the plenum drain tube which i found for him has a little tab here wayne if you can see and slots on now if you look on the crayford video you see that a bit more detail the crayford stripped stripped uh, scrap crayford video it's coming up soon suspension we've already covered of course bolted in you've just seen the engine go in on episode 40 so very neat and everything's lined up the engines parallel with the inside we've got a bonnet stay in there now bonnet stay rubber here build tags on there nicely done the oh, sorry not build tag the chassis tag the vin tag that's nicely on with the various codings for the car spec and then we've, we've made this didn't have a build tag it was lost so we've thanks to mark taylor we've decoded one and we've put on the there's letters on here that tell you if you've got radio fitted if you've got if you had factory wing or door mirrors fitted factory radio fitted a few other options to do with the building of the car as it comes down the assembly line under riders for example and things like that are stamped into this build tag and it tells the assembly line what items to fit as it trundles down the line because there's not enough room on your VIN tag to do all that extra information so we've decoded what it should read and off it goes I think I got one dash in the wrong place on the tag it should have been on the right and I got it I put it on the left I'll have to live with it I'm not going to get it redone one of the dashes is wrong so real train spotters will spot that but again we're talking about that perfection level that we've mentioned remember how far do you go at what, at what point do you stop okay so you've got to think about that where were you happy to stop and just set your own personal level because that enables you to function once you've drawn the borders up once you've drawn your your boundaries of where you'd like to go you can then work within those boundaries and it's more acceptable you could argue it's a way of of sort of talking yourself out of doing high quality jobs it's not it's basically being realistic to yourself so that you can function because if you let OCD go too far it then it then hinders you and becomes a problem because you lose a layer of enjoyment because the OCD spoils that level of enjoyment once you can find freedom and let it go and release it out of you in a way which is a constructive way you're able to move on and, and get a bit more enjoyment because like I said OCD can sometimes spoil your enjoyment because it never stops so you have to accept a level I'm not saying don't I'm not saying be lazy I'm not saying cut corners I'm just saying an example I'll just give you a classic example for me personally the build tag one of the letters is the other way around right most of it's correct I could send it back start all over again but it doesn't really matter in the greater scheme of things and uh, it just means more delay I mean okay let's say the guy I could ring him up now and just say couldn't just send us another tag could you perhaps I'll do it because it doesn't involve me doing any more work but maybe that's not the best example but it is an example of something that's recently cropped up where you might say that'll do me head in well maybe it will but I'm just going to carry on going you know and again little dents on the trim for example right I'm not putting the car on the road where's the dent on this one uh, there's some scratches there but I got most of those out um, actually this one's good it must be the other side I can't believe that's better than I thought bloomin' heck I had it in my head that this oh the right oh, it's, I'm not doing the car trim's dented you can't you've got to let things go and just do the best that you can that's the, the 10 minute bramble ramble sandwiched into the film sorry about that I do go on sometimes somebody said to me you could talk a glass eye to sleep I've got a problem with that and not that I, under, I totally understand what, what you mean um, 
but other people say keep on talking so i can't win i got one some people want me to just ramble away and they like listening others don't want me to so i can't win i want trying to keep everybody happy don't forget that hardcore action as well is, is few and far between you need to sometimes pad things out and have a chat some people like to get to know people when you're chatting you do get to know people it's not a hardcore bang 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 now we're doing this that's what you happen when you've got a tv production that's what happens with a tv production that's what happens when you've got tons of footage and material and they're getting paid and it's a profession and it's a job yeah and you've got another one coming in another car coming in after this and you can just keep on chopping it i've got to sort of drag this out a little bit not that i don't mean in time scale because i'm going quick but i mean in the films i'll pad it out a little bit for you and give you because through my rambles you can pick out little gems there's a lot of a lot of mess in there but the odd gem pops in because uh, stream of consciousness is always a good way of finding out what's on your mind you know i haven't got a cold i've got hay fever by the way but the pollen counts uh, dropped now but it was high the other week uh yeah so that's it stream of consciousness things just unravel and sometimes i'm i, I I talk away and I think, oh, wow, ah, yeah, that's good. That little gem had been locked away, but I've released it by getting it off my chest and sharing it with you guys. And that, but that's definitely enough now. I'm going to go underneath and we're going to bolt the axle on. So here's the action coming up. There's enough of that rambling. It's time to put some bushes in the front trailing arms, to get you underneath the back of the car. We'll bolt the axle on. Let's go. Under we go. Now then, I do promise you I'll get the axle on, but I, there's a couple of little trim bits I wanted to get out of the way so I'm not tripping over them, and they're gone and done and fitted, and that's it. So I've done one side, here's that window finishing trim, and a little corner piece, luckily a very, very kind guy on YouTube sent me these, and uh, and the hockey sticks as well, so we did well there, although Bramble's hockey sticks are okay, but still, wow, thanks for that, he knows who he is. Here's the mounting kit for it so some studs just underneath in the rail of it you can just see one popping out now there they slide in like t-shaped little bolts from bresco some grease just to put in the runners because they tend to corrode although those stud fixing bolts are galvanized to think passivate but they're on a little rivet that just holds this finishing trim on and just check that you're all lined up and that that line goes in there you can see that it does so we'd mark that out correctly we'd already done that before we had the car painted then these waterproof washers here slot on the inside so we go inside that side well the opposite of that side there and put our hands up put these bolts on seven mil socket on a long reach then nip them up gently and that's that finishing piece on obviously as well on this side we've got the gutter trim on too little coloured in rivet fits just there as well so that's that done it's a little uh, ford fixing rivet to the top never really knew if they were they were colored or aluminium but um they're the ones that are short those stubby little rivets with a quite a large head with unusual size rivet there that goes on it's covered by the rubber anyway that doesn't really matter but there we go we're going to go inside and bolt this up so that's that piece of trim on so slowly little bits of trim and then we'll do the the hockey stick which goes down here and that finish it i've done the hockey stick this side come around and have a little look badges on it as well at the back look easily that just goes 11 mil out from the edge 10 to 11 mil out from the edge 10 to 11 mil up from the bottom of the boot self-adhesive sticker goes on there laser cut one hockey stick there li nicely lining up with the bottom with the window trim you could probably move that down just a little bit more there's enough in it again that was marked out here's the stick this side here's that trim on this side all looking good little it just butts up to that uh, gutter trim it's why you got to get your gutter trim in the right place otherwise you can end up that being the wrong width can be a little bit tricky that's probably the hardest bit of trim we've got to fit the rest of it quite straightforward this needs a little bit of TLC just to get it right and flowing correctly so off we go with these nuts and bolts now it's time but I don't think we really care the man 
on wireless calls again. It's over, it's over. It's Pete's Bat singing volume one. A little bit of Barry, a little bit of Mitch, with tears in my eyes. There we go, that trim goes on nice. Nothing to do except bolt that on. Can you see that little hockey stick going on? Lovely stuff. Here we go. So to reach underneath and do the necessaries. But um, yeah, that's one of the last trims around the rear end. And it's just doors on next after I've got the side windows in. But I keep saying I'm going to go and do the axle. I've not done it yet because I thought, right, just get these last bits of trim on. Then I'll be more clear-headed to do the axle. So... Again, another four rubber ceiling washers on the inside of this. And these bolts, that one's easy to get to. It gets a bit tricky about here. Your hands up and sort of, you need to be a bit of a contortionist now to get into there. I've got some herbal tea, some spearmint, peppermint tea on the go. So I'm going to go and sip at that because we're being nice. And then we'll bolt up. I promise at some point I shall take you under the car and we'll go and have a little look. Uh, at the axle going on. In the moment on Radio 2 it's uh, 1984, hits of 84 and we've currently got Denise Williams let's hear it for the boy. I don't really want to celebrate uh, this boy that she's talking about because um, he can't really do anything. He sings off key, he doesn't really do a lot, he doesn't really look very well and yet we're all supposed to applaud him. It's rubbish, he, he's useless. Let's give the boy a hand, but what for? He can't do anything. Go on, Denise, sing it out. We've had um, Evelyn Thomas's high energy. I was really giving it a bit of the old uh, high energy dancing before. You missed that. I saved you the pain. Kevin's Detroit T-shirt coming in great too. Look at the gear shifter. See in a sec. Got cracking up. Cutsy the city cracking up. Cracking up. Thank you. Just waiting for the door to shut. This uh, in front of you, we, we can't do the axle with no bushes. We'll have to get them ordered. So we'll do the axle next time. I'm going to do the exhaust as well. I'm going to do these badges. So I'm just measuring and swapping across the automatic script across to the new old stock plinth 65, 65. So this was brambles. It was in good order to be fair, but it has got some marks on it. Okay, but it's a very usable, nice piece of plinth, a pleak, rear pleak, a very nice early preface lift, series one, or preface lift, a pleak, without the black stripe, which they later put in black on the two litre E's. This is a bit of a, a change. Um, it's got some tarnish. This one's new out of the box, but it doesn't come with the automatic badge, so what we do... We take that automatic badge off here by just gently removing the rivets. Then we're using an adhesive sealant. We're going to lay it onto there. I'm not going to drill or rivet this back onto the new plinth. So we've just cleaned this up, repainted that surface because it was quite um, corroded this. So we've, we've just smoothed it and run it up a little bit. And now we're going to apply the script writing, which I've also restored a little bit. And that makes the applique. This is another job where it's hanging around in the way and to get them trim pieces out of the boxes and onto the car. We're not going to scratch anything now that we've got room to move. So some glue using Tiger Seal just to fit this badge there. It won't come off without. And as I say, there's no point drilling and putting the rivet through. Um, yeah, that's what it's like. Automatic badge for this plinth then. And then we'll box this up. Brambles can be kept as a spare. No problem. Leaky water bottle. Dry, itchy, flaky scalp. Want to fix it? Here's a little tip for fixing your washer bottle. We'll use the car as a suitable background. Now then. 9 out of 10 of these water bottle failures are because... And come round and join me. 
the bracket wears through the back of the slot. So here's your Mark III Cortina washer bottle, slides on this bracket here, yours for 4K, slides that down, yours for 4 grand, and what it does over time, with vibration perhaps, slowly cuts a groove into the back of the bottle, rendering your lovely reasonably white plastic for moco in this case so early ones were badged for moco later ones ford logos rendering it leaky from the back and renders you going onto ebay and probably having to pay 25 30 quid for a washer bottle when you can fix it with just a little bit of glue now then buy yourself some speed epoxy here it is we've, we've talked about it before this is a good tool to have in your arsenal. Um, yeah, this is sort of a, a four minute quick set in speed epoxy. I get this, you can get it on eBay. That's six quid, could it be eight quid? It's not a lot of money. It's gonna serve you well through various jobs. And in particular, it's gonna serve you well fixing your washer bottle like we've just done. I discovered a slow leak. At first I thought it was the tube. I think I discussed it Again, early on in some of the films where I thought water was coming out of the bottle, I was right all along. So, I think you can see this coming. Mix it into the... Um, that's a cap, isn't it? That's a cap. That's a Dutch cap. Put it in a Dutch cap. What are you on about? Mix it into this uh, lid, or anything that you want. You've got about 30 seconds, 40 seconds, maybe a minute to get it before it starts, the viscosity starts to go thicker. Hair dryer can thin it out if you've just brought it out of your garage and it's cold. It needs to be room temperature to work fluidly. It'll mix, but it runs a lot better if you get it up to room temp. Problem with that, just use a hair dryer if you want to get it up. Oh my God, we're going to get it if you want to get it up. I can't help it! Look, if you want to get it up to room temperature, this is not, I'm not doing these innuendos on purpose. I'm telling, I don't want this to become an innuendo channel right uh, i don't want it to come uh, become an innuendo channel it's just going to ruin ruin the luster of my channel cortina city is not tawdry if there's such a word you've mixed it then pour it in through the top is what i was trying to say and it'll land just inside here can we see this can we get some light on that i don't think because it's clear you can hardly tell i've repaired it it'll pool into the bottom of the um tub okay and then tilt it back like this and just let it run into the groove with some masking tape at the back so there's your masking tape so otherwise you're going to be dribbling out um, of the slit so you don't want to dribble out of the slit so there's the slit that it's cut into it that even rhymes so you don't want it dribbling out of the slit so just let it run back and forwards like this just rock it you can see what I'm what I'm saying and it'll just set behind it it's flexible reasonable there's a little bit of flex in it doesn't go like crack rock hard crack crack rock <laughs> crack rock crack rock <laughs> I don't do drugs my only drug is a Ford Mark III Ford Cortina that's my drug that's my fix and your fix hopefully is Cortina City. So there's a repaired washer bottle. It's going to work. We're going to fill it with water and we're going to show that it's working. Come on, let's fill it up. Here we go. Over to the sink. My sink is currently taken over by other things. I'm going to test this washer bottle, but we've got we've got my sun visor, what was left of it. This was really bad and still is bad and may never salvage again, but we've got it the uh, post on it is sea solid and we're trying to de-rust it and free up the post so that the thing will start moving again it was absolutely filthy i've managed to clean it with some bleach and stuff but the foam itself's all crumbling but i don't know it's softened up a little bit we'll go back to the sun visor because this is a gxl one with the map uh, not the map pocket but your document pop wallet cover normal um, l spec doesn't have this little wallet so it's gxl so we've got to have this type so it is cleaning up that post, it's starting to clean it up, this is some um, de-rusting solution from Clarky. Now then, let's get back to the main event. Will it work? So, last night's pots and pans. 
bit of a wash down, get our snake dinner out of the way. In we go, because that's now cured. And uh, fill her up. Work. Around that area was where we had the leak, and there's nothing now. And the advantage with repairing from the inside is that it doesn't rub your repair off. So I've seen people trying to silicon these up from the outside, only to find when you slot them back on, the bracket just cuts through it again. This way, it's built up an internal layer, and uh, even if it does start to grind at it, you've built up some layers of of the epoxy inside so do a couple of layers and let it just run in it takes like say 10 minutes and it's probably watertight probably longer to fully harden but that'll be watertight now that's been 15 minutes curing that speed epoxy is good stuff so that's a washer bottle repair so you've saved what would have been a write-off hopefully, hopefully if your bottle ever fails or you get one off eBay or you get one from a jumble or whatever and you find it's leaking and it's on the bracket have a look down the bottom, it's usually the first section here that goes as it cuts through it, you'll be able to repair it without the speed epoxy, hope that helps. Okay, over to the sun visor then, and, and last night's dirty dishes, not quite Patrick Swayze, more dirty dishes. We find that the, the acid in solution has a dual effect, cleans the vinyl and starts to slowly eat the rust away on our post here, can you see that? fixing post two tank tabs there then on these single post visors designed to break away in an impact spring mounted into the roof we had to specially fit the sockets for these because the roof donor panels are used on the car we offer a, a facelift and they went to fixed visors pre facelift had these these uh, single post ones I prefer single post because you can twist round the visor for the sunshine on the on the right of the car if you're getting blinded by the sun you can spin them and lock them in that side position so it has that um, one spring you can see there is for the tension to keep it so when you uh, when you twist it uh, to the side it sort of grips and doesn't uh, flop all over the place the other spring is not shown here but that goes over that spring and the whole lot spring presses into the roof much you would much as you would with a bayonet light bulb, you can see those bayonet lugs, those ears there on the die cast metal designed to snap. So those lugs will break away and then as those lugs break away on an impact, the spring itself ejects the post out of the socket. So if you have a crash and your head hits it, snaps, and then if you roll in your car, which is where you probably get this kind of injury in the rollover type situation, this will have ejected itself out of the roof out of the way that was the point what they tried to do on the mark 3 cortina was come up with all these safety features so the switches are breakaway switches all the toggle switches snap off dead easy There's the knobs themselves just just eject themselves and um, the interior mirror breaks away from its socket all those kind of things you've got the collapsible steering column you got the first one of the first ever safety cells and collapsible zones on the inner wings with the collapsible points on the chassis legs themselves all these features were beginning to get built into the car and this was one of them an ejectable type single post visor now because Bramble's roof was totally gone and rusting the, the, the water damage managed to reach the socket and the visor and has managed to seize it into its socket now this de-rusting solution I'm pretty impressed with. I don't know what it's called. I'm going to ask, have to ask Darren Clark from Trax Hydraulics. He's just given me this in a milk tub. Now very important, it's not Clarky's fault. Remove these. Never, never let this, it's not Clarky's fault, um, label stay on there. You've always got to, look what I've done here. You've always got to do this. Here's some brick acid. Look, the second that you put any kind of chemical in a food tub make sure you label that food tub because if you've got kids around if you forget yourself or anyone else look you could swig at that that's brick acid you, you're finished you're gone yeah you're just history that will burn you from the inside out oh doesn't even bear thinking about so look acid 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 okay 
and this again is is a form of this could be an alkali I don't know but it's certainly a de-rusting solution but it must have this label taken off it's deadly you cannot you cannot you cannot cannot stress that enough you've got to mark it up the risk is just too great okay so we're gonna do that we're gonna get that get that off and get that marked up with big red letters okay that's something I'm really passionate about some of these safety aspects I know sometimes I make some some dangerous moves but that's usually the only dangerous moves I normally make are buying a buying rusty mark free cortinas I'm into eye protection you know rubber up it's very important and um, keep your eyes protected your eyes you only get one set your lungs your eyes all those things don't do pretend and be a hero it doesn't work you just pay for it later in life and your ears as well do you want to be deaf look at Fred Dibner he ended up being deaf because all them jackhammers um, if you see him when I don't know, slightly off topic Fred Dibner big hero of mine and I'm sure of, of, of everyone else if you've never heard of Fred Dibner it's D-I-B-N-A-H Fred Dibner he's a steeplejack but great guy one of the one of the last of the the uh, engineers old school he um, he he got knighted and um, I remember watching the video when he got knighted and he's cupping his hand over his ear because he's got obviously gone deaf in later life he wasn't that old um, because the jackhammer all that jackhammering on them on them uh, chimneys smashed his ears in the end got him in the end his ears so when you angle grinding put your ear defenders on when you're doing any hammering put your ear defenders on because 10 years down the line you'll just be moaning about it one advantage is you might not hear people moaning at you but you might want to listen to music and you wouldn't want that taken away lecture over let's move on to something else we'll let this uh, go in on uh, wash cycle 3 it's already coming up clean but will it penetrate in to the visor and free itself up probably not and that there's a chassis inside here like a wire frame again collapsible with the with the foam this whole visor is designed to just just collapse and not become a hard object because it's right in front of your head of course um, and it could have well seized into that and the frame itself will just disintegrate we don't know whether that will free up but it's already bringing that rusty uh, screw head there that's in stainless well I don't know if it actually is in stainless but it's certainly a chrome screw head and washer and that's already starting to show signs of life so it's incredible I'm, I'm, I only regret not showing you this before I put it in here because it was absolutely it looked like a write-off and it may still be a write-off but there are signs of life you know so we'll see how we get on with that the axle won't be getting fitted. I know I've mentioned this a few minutes ago. I haven't got the bushes, so I'm going to order them now. I think the 43 mil bushes, Flow Flex. We're going to do other things. There's a bit of trim and stuff to put on. Let's get away from the sink before we get in trouble. We'll get back into the garage. So, a little bit of another bit of a ramble. He's off again. See you in a sec. Okay, now that I've got the washer bottle repaired and it's fine and not leaking anymore. We can now test the jets. Now I've lined the jets up. Benny and the jets are lined up. These jets here, you just have to give them little tweaks. Keep pressing. You know the score. And then get them into the middle of the screen, which we've now done. So it's pretty much self-explanatory with these uh, jets. I've put mine on the second rung in. You could put them on the outer slit or rung or whatever you want to call it. I wouldn't go any further in. It's not going to reach about the first slot or the second slot, both sides, and get the, the jets to land, the twin jets. So I usually get the first one there and there. Some are better than others. Sometimes they don't quite push out the other jet, but you can get them. Now, ignition on, and we're going to do a, an automatic wash wipe cycle to test the rain sensors. The pads attached here in the sweep zone. So that's top of my fingers are the maximum out uh, zone out from the blade so it's got to go within the, the sweep of course for it to work there's the pad on centralized or so measured halfway then stood at the front of the car put a bit of masking tape on it and just lined it up with a mirror mirror post and the middle of the car so I hope I've got that straight yeah 
That's straight-ish. <laughs> Halfway between the mirror. And now what we do is... Hold on. Oh, it's the radar. I thought someone was there. The radar was on back and freaked me out then. Halfway between the mirror. So in, in it goes there. And now what we do, we hit the auto wash cycle. Now to get the auto wash cycle on it, I, I'm using the cruise pack. Normally if I hit that button, we don't get the, the wash cycle. We get just a normal jet of water and no automatic wipers. Let's do that. I'll reach in with my hand and I'm just pressing the pedal under normal circumstance with no automatics kicking in. So if I can reach the pedal, squirt. Can you see that? I'm just checking on the screen. Yeah. Right, so that's just normal. Then it'll do a post wipe now, which is standard feature without being on automatic. The post wipe comes in, and that's the end of that. So that's the end of your, your uh, normal driving. <clears throat> okay, so your motorway driving, or heavy rain expected, or you want to get uh, fully automatic, we pull down. That'll now engage the hot wash system as well, but because the engine's not running, the amp gauge doesn't show a deflection. It means the hot wash is not on. I can hear the relay though. Hear that heavy relay? But the hot wash voltage sensor now knows not to switch it on because the engine's not running, so we don't get any hot jets. Although if I connect the battery charger, let's do that. If I connect the battery charger to it, it'll simulate the alternator being on. So battery charger, let's do this. We should see a current draw across the amp gauge showing that we're getting warm jets. On we go. Let's see what we get. <clears throat> Let's take that up. Give it eight amps. Right. This should, <clears throat> excuse me, this should increase the voltage across the battery terminals, which will then give us yes, and indeed it's straight in. Look. It's heating it up. It was on a full draw. You just missed it. It was on full draw. It must have finished its... Uh, oh, there it goes. So that is the hot wash system cutting in because I've pulled down in anticipation of an auto wipe situation. So <clears throat> I think it does it in like 30 seconds to a minute max. Still heating up. Rare use of the zoom. Just let's keep our eye on that amp gauge. Rare use of the zoom. Taking shorter pulses now, uh, drawing shorter bursts of current as it gets towards temperature. And we'll be ready for wash cycle. Ignition alternators connected because the lights come on the dash there. Still taking a bit. The idea is it would be on all the time, of course, so you wouldn't be waiting for this, but I'm using it in conjunction with this. You can have it on permanently if you want. There's an option for that under a switch under the dash, but <clears throat> I, I would have thought just to use it on the um, cruise to toggle down. Still drawing. That's going to be pretty hot when that comes out of there. So we're waiting then for the hot wash to finish its its job. So you'd have to anticipate this delay if it's if it's off on the stalk, but between washes it would catch up. I can hear it activating it. I don't know if you can hear it on the relay or not. I'm still giving it a good old go. I don't think it took this long last time when I was testing it, but I didn't have a volt. I didn't have a charger across the battery. Last time I had my um, my power pack 
across it which may behave differently than that charger I've got running there it's finished now it's, it's done right so that hot wash is on the stalk is down which means if I press the foot pedal now here that will send an arm signal across to the module and tell it to come fully automatic we'll get squirts of water the wipers will take over themselves they'll speed up as the jets of water hit the sensor hot water will come out and the wipers will run for a while till they're satisfied then they'll overrun for a little bit and eventually everything should settle I'll then spray the bottle on the screen and it should pick up light raindrops and heavy raindrops let's see what happens let's hit it there we go fully automatic now red hot whoa that is hot hear the wipers on automatic and they've stopped they've finished the cycle any dribbles of rain now go across the pad it may pick those up but at the moment nothing let's get the squirty bottle so they are now armed and waiting to receive information from that rain sensing pad and there it goes and there it goes settle down in a sec sometimes it'll do that if you if you give it squirts in succession it's finished it does have an algorithm I'm not sure how they've programmed the algorithm but it is there so we're running we're up and running I say I put the pad just as best I can in the sweep pattern any higher up and you start to lose the effectiveness you're better off just coming just underneath so that's it. Wipers are on, ladies and gentlemen. What about it? Don't you like it when a plan comes together? And of course, we did a lot of work on that. Let's switch the battery charger off. Although, no, I won't switch off just yet. Let's see how we're doing with our hot wash on the amp gauge. Are we still pulling power? Little pu little pulses. Let's get the let's get the temperature probe and just see what temperature that's coming out at. I don't know if it'll give us a completely accurate readout. Um, I don't know if we'll actually be able to get the jets on here, folks, but twenty two, because you can't actually you can't actually get the water midstream. I could Oops, I caught the, the camera with the uh, temp probe there. I can't catch the jet mid-air with this. It'd be very difficult to try and get that to, to catch the jet, but you might get it on the screen. Probably won't be able to. We could get it on the pipe, maybe. Or well, the heat won't conduct out of that very well. 23.6. I don't think we're going to really achieve anything with this. Let's do it anyway. Another automatic cycle then. Here we go. 32 28 I got a 32 out of it the jets difficult pipes are hot though I mean obviously your hands your best pipes are hot and no sign of it trying to blow it off the tube what's it doing trying to catch up now yeah, trying to catch up on the amp gauge, look. Auto wipers getting some last droplets off. Hot wash still cutting in. Let's get you some light. Isn't that exciting though, isn't it? Oh, it's so great because all, all the toys are starting to come together. Wow. So of course if you're on the motorway now and there's grease and grime coming at you uh, this is always down because you're on auto wipe 
and I've not put it on the cancellor, the self cancellor course, that's deactivated, so it won't knock off when you're doing the wheel, of course the indicator does, obviously, but that stays down, and you're down for your journey, I mean you can have it up, down all the time if you want, you know, it's just that it'll activate your auto wipers. But when I mean, you don't have to activate, you can go manual on your auto on your wipers if you want, and it, it won't interfere. The car behaves normally on those. It'll do the. Um, it's obviously in auto wipe mode now, but I could have that up and obviously just do my wipers normally. They'll just come straight off now. Actually, they're actually armed till I turn the ignition off. Actually, <clears throat> doesn't knock it out. So I'll turn the ignition off, so you've got a post wipe delay still active on that switch. Watch it'll come in now, post wipe. That's always there. I think. Or oh, did I deactivate post wipe on that switch so that it was totally stand up? I forgot how I did that. Oh yeah, sorry, post wipes only when you use the washer pedal. Sorry, my apologies. So um, that'll come in now that's back on so that'll activate the the heated jets again but they're probably hot there they go they're heating up so that's how it works it's quite good i mean you can tweak it a little bit if you want but for me i really like it and uh the screen's gonna be kept nice and clean there so let's do one more well shall we see if i think we should still be on range sensing we are sometimes it'll go over a little bit longer but it always it always resets now it'll reset there you go you get you get used to how it works it's been brilliant on ruby and don't let anyone uh, tell you that they're no good because they are it is a sophisticated piece of kit it's got to do quite a difficult job it works off infrared and lenses and prisms here infrared sent out through these little lenses and it works off the fact that a droplet of water, the internal refraction on water, bounces some of the light back. Water behaves in a particular way in the way that it refracts, refracts, refracts the light back. And this sensor is able to interpret that as small droplets or large droplets and stationary droplets. So if you cover it in dust or snow, the theory is it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't see that as rain. I don't think it sees dust as rain. I think if, if we sprayed powder on there, I'd be interested to see if it, if it interprets that as raindrops. I'm almost sure that it needs the reflective property of water to activate it, I think. I might be wrong there. Let me know what you think about rain sensing wipers. I know a lot of them, you've got them on your cars and you either love them or you hate them. For me, it's worked. When I go on a long distance drive, I want the car doing everything. now purists will say that wow how can you you know you put these modifications to the car and it, and yet you're trying to make it loads of standard concourse things that you do well you know that i might do a level of detail that's quite satisfactory and a good clean job but i, I don't have to be concourse it's nice to do concourse it's quite a satisfying feeling and there's some people who are really good at that for me i like to be in the sort of zone of the feel of what it would have been like rather than it actually being concourse so for example labeling up crews in that font there doesn't look out of place it's not like an ugly switch when you look at the dash I know it's got LED lights but when you look at the dash it doesn't jump out at you straight away that it's been modified heavily yes it's quite restored and perhaps you could argue over restored perhaps for me that's great by the way I love it loves things that are over restored and um, I think that, for me anyway, it looks almost bang on, and I'm quite difficult to, to satisfy, or rather should I say, my OCD is difficult to satisfy. So when you get that almost, if not satisfied feeling, that's a really great thing, and it's hard for me in, in my life to get sometimes to get that where I can actually close the door on the garage and think actually really happy with that there's not much I'd change it, because there's usually always something's niggling me and with this dashboard and the electronics I'm really impressed with how I've done it I don't I'm not bigging myself up as such 
I'm just really impressed how it's worked. I really am. It's gone together and done exactly what we planned planned it out to do. And I think if you look back through the technical vids, um, look back through those techie vids, and you'll see that we did a lot of, of planning and robustness was built into it. So those harnesses were, were beefy, the cables were slightly over over what they were, but that gave the, the loom strength so that when it came to fit the dash and we were tugging, pulling, squashing, bashing, them rugged cables were able to withstand that little bit of um, bashing about that it took to get, well, I say bashing about, it's the wrong word, but you know, there was stretching and pushing going on. If those were thin cables, like telephone type cable or you know just thinner gauge wire which a lot of them were signal wires could have been used when you pull on them molex plugs and stuff that's the difference between a good over engineered plug uh, especially when you've not got a lot of room to get in and about and you know that you're gonna have to be up against these kind of things if it was just staying on the bench you could have done it but as soon as you bring it into the operating environment that's when the extra levels start to kick in so you've got to open your field of view right up when you're building a system and try and think of every extreme case and then build in another operating error margin on top of that and that's where it pays dividends because you get less faults i'm not saying i won't get faults with this but already blown a fuse why did i blow a fuse well what did i do i connected something up that draw to draw to, drew ah the starter motor as soon as i went to turn the key because it starts this car now by the way uh, well, it turns over. It blew the fuse because I'd set the fuse boxes up on five amp across the board, and that started to. Well, that what that probably needed eight amps, so it took the fuse out. But is that a problem? No, there was no. There's no electrical problem. It's just it took the fuse out. And point. What I'm saying is, I went to change the fuse, right? And there's a lot of them. There's 16 fuses in here, and I just reached underneath. Because we planned it out and the modules all landed in the right place, I just grabbed the fuse box off its Velcro back, bring it down, and bump. And it's labelled A, and I knew which fuse it was. And anyway, these light up with LEDs when the fuses pop. Look how neat that is. Look how easy that is to service. No point putting them where you can't get to them. No point having them fixed when you can just have that Velcro pad. In fact, this one's not got it on yet. The, the male side of the velcro is in position I've not connected the pad to this this actually wants a little foam pad and velcro pad attached to the back and then it just sticks on this pad here and you're on well that was easy to change you can't see it it's out of the way and all your fuses are done so it worked so what I'm saying is all that planning has worked and you start to get reliable systems up and running hot wash jet again I'm going to put my hand in the water stream this time nothing better than feeling it and you have to go off what I say here we go one two a buckle my shoe ah when yeah we are on auto wow it's hot go on give me another go on baby ah yeah that's good that's good I like that turn it up we are rocking some droplets there now let's get you in Finish next cycle. How come I know how come I know how that works? You just get used to how it's done, how the how the software's written. It's got certain ways it behaves on heavy rain, a three or four continuous light rain squirts, and it always gives an extra overrun. A heavy heavy squirt, it'll go heavy on the fast speed two, slow two fast speed twos, and down unless I squirt again. It does it the same on Ruby. Really interesting, and actually like the predictability of that. Okay, that's a long one. That was a long. That was a 20 minute hit, in, but not in a ramble either. And you've got the rambles to come. Washing machine ramble or television ramble. Wow, right in the middle of 41. 20 minutes of messing about. Right in the middle of 41. 20 minutes of messing about battery's gone as well god post wipe no not a post wipe just a, a top up wipe it's probably seen a droplet yes look some stuff just running down i bet you can't get it to i'll try and run some stuff over it oh! <laughs> seen a bit sorry about the ramble 
but you can see how exciting it is I can justify that 20 minutes okay wipers then so we are just drifting a little bit we'll get right back on target we'll fix the washer bottle anyway let's go and see how the sun visor is doing we're doing really well just doing the fuel pipe run and clean the fuel pipe up fuel pipe comes with little white circular labels on it we replaced them with white heat shrink just because it's more durable than putting a sticker on there we're keeping the detail not quite sure what they signified there might have been some text on them but we're going to get pretty close to a bit of detail in there heat gun on then for those obviously no fuel in the line at this point so we're okay So we'll just we'll get them on. There's four all together. And then we're going to see how that sun visor's doing. It's been in been in for a few hours. Hopefully it'll start loosening up. Loosen up, baby. Yeah. Fuel line. I'd like to share some info with you regarding uh, exhaust mount rubbers and cortinas. Okay, there's a couple of different types. You've got this circular one here pig's nose can you see okay and also you've got this oval shaped one look now I, I must admit I don't know which one suits the exhaust better however what I do know is that this fits only fits on one way which I have only learned today after all the years I've been doing cars there's a large opening on this side and it's slightly narrower on that side with some silicon spray on there slot across and you get a very satisfying clip it just snaps in nice that's a really good fit there look it's not wobbling around anything that's never going to come off that yet it's easy to take and remove so I'm wondering if these appear to be better and more robust and they just clip onto the Cortina's exhaust mount brackets better the piggy nose ones seem to have more chance of sliding off and indeed in the past that has happened the only thing I don't know is whether it takes it too low down not sure now I don't know if it's designed to mount also sideways it looks like it is which would I suppose solve that issue it looks like you can go sideways too look so that is a more robust engine mount I prefer uh, exhaust mount which I prefer now we'll leave we'll leave them I'll leave that one that way and there's another one at the other side you'll see the nice bracket on as well we've got one further up towards the end of the car so I like them ones I don't know where I got them from this came with the exhaust this the, the, the piggy piggy but those ones I prefer these are the bushes that are holding me up 43 mil arm bushes are missing I must never have ordered them I've got EP90 waiting in the wings to fill the axle up. I bought some Castrol EP90. I've got the ID tag now refitted to the axle bolt. That's the 3.75 Ford uh, axle identifying tag. Look, genuine one that came with the car, just cleaned up. I've got an EP90 warning sticker on there. Just makes it look a little bit more of a factory look. And it reminds me, I always forget it's EP90, I shouldn't do, but the, that sticker came with a Castrol. So if I'll stick it on the axle, <coughs> excuse me, why not? Tanks in, of course, there's the white bands making those lovely fuel lines look better. Just, I think that plastic fuel line can take unleaded, I don't think there'd be a problem with that. I don't think that I've never known one go yet. I have known the hose go, and I'm going to talk about hose in a sec. That needs to clip into there should snap in yes so down the run goes the fuel line with its associated white bands giving it a factory finish now I'll talk of fuel lines let's jump across into my uh, imminent spares box so everything in here is about to go on the car so it's kind of like a short working box and there is something a real surprise I want to show you in a minute you're gonna love this wait where's that fuel hose though 
some fuel hose, some naughty fuel hose. There. It says 1982 on it, so I don't think we're going to be using that. That's sure, sure going to break down. Might look braided, but we get new stuff. That's too old. I don't know where that's come from. Auto jumble, that one, probably. Now, look at this for a shocking revelation. These from Car Builders. I'm going to have to contact Car Builders because Car Builders, very good. Fast service, great. But air horn sounds loud and it is loud. Compact, and I like the idea of it, okay? It's a good idea. It's a compact horn. And I thought it was made by Fiam or Klaxon. I think Klaxon got bought out by Fiam. I think that's a French company. There's two horn companies. Fiam's one of them. There is one other. I forget what it is. Anyway, it looked like that's what it was. It looked like this was a Fiam. And indeed, I'm almost sure on the photograph it says Fiam. I might be wrong, so I don't want to get in trouble. And I'm not knocking car builders. They just need to be made aware, that's all. Because car builders are a good, good company. So please don't think I'm having a go at them. Look at this then. On the face of it, you've got a compressor and then an air tube. It's coming into a high and low, which is fine. Lightweight, compact, and cheap at 25 quid. I can't really complain. You get what you pay for. Now, I was going to fit two of them. They're that loud. I'm just fitting one. So this one's the spare. However, the motor broke on this. In fact, it blew the fuse straight away. So that's faulty out of the box. Okay, it was red, I've painted it black and invalidated the warranty. So there goes your Terry's chocolate orange, gone. But here's the real killer. And this is what I want to make, make them aware of. Perhaps you get what you pay for with that, and that's okay. But I want to make them aware of this fact. Look at this. So what we got, it comes with a relay fitting kit. This is 30 amp draw. It's a quite a, that's quite a bit of kit. I've got the cables already set up for 30 amps, and I've got my own 30 amp relay already in the engine bay ready. But they supply you with a relay, and it says 30 amps. Look, can you see this? Can we get it in some light? Can we have a look at this? Okay. Now it's very light, so I thought it was a solid state relay. So I was suspicious. Now. Let me freeze the camera and open this up for you. Let me just get a screwdriver and open it up because it'll be. I mean, you're not going to be able. To, my God, I can bend the. I can bend the pins just by hardly even touching them. Let's get a screwdriver. I think you know what's coming, don't you? I think you know damn well what's coming. Let's see if we can do it. Like, I don't think I will be able to. But I was going to say, let's see if I can do it without letting go of the camera, but I doubt it. Huh. I think I have. I've kept the camera in my hand and I've opened that with one hand. Right, it's open. 30 amps then, ladies and gentlemen. Are you ready for this a shock horror? <laughs> oh my god. Just let's get it under the window lens. This is crazy. Let's get it in some light. Let's see what Morrissey thinks of this. I think Morris is very impressed with this relay. If he didn't have a razor blade out, he's certainly going to have one out now. Look, they've put uh, another relay inside the main body of the relay. Right, now, it's a 5 amp. <laughs> That's a 5 amp relay in a 30 amp enclosure. That's dangerous. So that, this is the reason why they need to be made aware of this. You can't put stuff like... You put that under your engine bay. That's going to melt. That relay, Them relay contacts will just melt. Right, now, okay, this is probably... In, this plastic is probably not flammable. But it's not the point, is it? I mean, what if that housing was so crap that your wiring harness pulled on it and pulled it out of the housing and left your housing screwed to your inner wing or wherever you mount it? Then this is dangling down. You activate your horn. That melts. Who's to say it won't? Um, you could be. It could be near your fuel line. You, 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 you've no necessarily uh, exact plan of how you're going to put the relay. Your fuel line could be running close to this. Activate that. That goes hot. 
melts because 30 into 5 doesn't go you got yourself a fire all right it's an outside risk of course i, I realize that but that's shocking it's so shocking that we're going to put 30 amps through it and just see what exactly what happens come on let's have a little bit of fun we don't often do stuff like this on cortina city we're normally sticking to the program but we need these people need to be aware of things like this cheap garbage like that that's going to wreck your classic car and all the blooming hard work you've done i mean it's only because of its lightweight I, I smelt a rat and there was one let's smoke it out okay some resistors to connect up let's get about 20 amps running through this now we'll connect these up get you on the tripod and let's test this piece of junk just see if it can switch well let's just try 20 amps so uh, about four or five of these resistors load resistors and we're good to get test we're good to go pretty useless it doesn't even switch the load the contacts aren't even closing useless this relay is good for one thing and one thing only Oof. that's destruction level for this that's all it's good for good night goodbye Bye bye. Come on, heck, put it out. Please stop it. Thirty amps, my ass. What a joke. Five amps, my ass. Won't even switch one amp. What a joke. Well. You wouldn't have thought it, but after a few hours in the acid bath, it's only gone and separated, but it's come out. And the internal structure which rotates this, this is on the sun visor we've been doing, is intact. I can feel it. So we've almost salvaged what was completely gone, almost usable sun visor. Now, this bit is heavily pitted. Look, I mean, there's nothing left that should be circular. But we might be able to get another one of these it's possible or I could over sleeve it with this heat shrink and that might take some of the the, the rough looking edge off it so we could try if you'd have said to me that this old knackered seized up rusted GXL XL sun visor could go again I'd have thought you were crazy but you know what we might just about wing this one Heat shrink over that post, post slotted in with some grease, the screws even managed to re-engage so the internal structure can't be that corroded or that screw wouldn't now be able to pinch and put the resistance on this post so it's actually performing as you would. It's actually, if we hold it up, uh, hang on, get a bit of light on it, there we go, there, then look, we're going we're gonna to get away with that, I think we are, let's carry on cleaning. Wow, I'll put some light on the matter. Right, we're back in the sink again. Toothbrush, Mr. Muscle, bleach, regular washing up liquid, cream with micro crystals going in now, sif. So we're just giving it everything we've got to get it as white as we can. These micro crystals on the sif should do it, and a toothbrush to get into the perforations. Who'd have thought? When you first, I wish I could have shown it you as it was, I really do. Maybe if you want to just look, well you won't do because it's, it's a sad affair, but if you, if you ever casually glancing back through the vids, you'll see a Bramble video, you'll see the sun visors, maybe on the stripped down vid. And this is, this is it, this is that sun visor. I'm surprised, I've got to say, I, I didn't think we'd get it like this. I thought we might get, I, I thought the, the structure here, the uh, frame there would all just be gone but it's not and that's that acid that rust remover from Clarky from from the uh, tracks hydraulics we're gonna have to find out what that's called because that was quite good that could be better than the stuff I've been using this is looking white all right top middle bottom all right top middle bottom disgraced disgraced the rise and the fall. What? Gone. That guy is gone. What? Top middle bottom. Gone. 
too many swimming pools for that guy. I think we're well on our way, folks. Okay, let's do a, a reveal. A little bit of warm water. Oh, wow. I think we're in. Yep. Well, certainly in terms of the colour, we're good. The uh, texture or the shape, we might not ever get back. But you know, you never know. That like, might just, it might. It's, it's actually gone all soft. Oh, here we go again. <laughs> it's gone soft in my hands, but with a bit of stimulation, look, I can get that to rise again and fight another day. Okay, there's a little stain there on the bed sheets, look. But, we could plug, oh no, we can't plug that. Uh, we could, I'll tell you what, let's try a little bit of, stay with me, but just hear me out on this. Bit of bleach. Some micro crystals. Let's just try localize. There's just, there's just one patch, like a uh, oil or something, or just rust from the years. It may go, it may not. If it doesn't, we're still 90%. Oh, a lot better than what I would have expected. I think we're going to be good to go there. Slight stain on it. Oh, domestic. Ah, I'm under attack. Help me. I'm under attack from household implements. That's good. Let's let's quit while we're ahead. Okay. Wow. Did we salvage that? Oh, did we salvage that? Look at the heat shrink over it. You can almost get away with that. I might even clean my hands one day as well. The state of my nails. Come on, get them sorted out. And that nail's got smacked. Wow, let's get this dry. I know it's a close angle shot for you, but it's unusual you see me working in the kitchen. <laughs> see you in a sec. Right, that's all cleaned up and looking smart. I think you'll agree, considering it's a miracle. That's a, that's the biggest surprise I've had in ages. I did not think that I'd go. Just go show, just, you know, don't give up, just in case. Look, we've salvaged what, it was just written off. So there's the galvanized spring going on on top of the other spring a little bit of grease and then the ears now just this is a tricky part i'm just going to grab it only by the stalk i'm not going to grab this by the body of it i'm going to try and slot it in i think the best place for it to sit is going to be just in its natural habitat okay so i'm going to slot this into the roof well it took a bit of doing but i got it in the end it was just trying to slot it in okay a little bit of creasing in it but Considering what we had, come on. Let's hear it for the boy. Let's give the boy a hand. I might not be no Romeo, but I don't have put on a one-man show. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's hear it for the boy. So proof that you can fix your sun visor. Now here's a little trick I noticed along the way as well. If the lugs, have I got any here? Uh, we need one with broken lugs take these broken lugs and let them fly again no I can't show it you but there's some little lugs at least the bayonet lugs you can drill them out and roll pin them and then cut the roll pins down and make new lugs if they if they find that when you take yours out the lugs snap one of these lugs broke but I, I roll roll pinned it we're back in the game and that's the problem when when it's all corroded the lugs start to corrode but we're in the game we're on look you can flip you can move we can come out this way, look, everything that we want. Part of the, the new great range from Ford. How about that? We got away with it, folks. A bit wobbly, but it's not bad. Oh, Joby's grabbing hold of the paintwork. There you go. That's La Vista. That bit's done. Wow, wow. Okay, now for some trim action. Rear applique goes on. Whoa, it's going to look great. Off screen for you. Well, don't worry. We're always back with a very new looking applique. 
the icing on the cake for that silver fox as Russell Wallace points out those lovely warm hues will shine through with this trim okay so Brambles automatic badge transferred across to a new old stock plint Brambles into stores this one completely mark free Brambles wasn't bad but the opportunity arose to fit this lovely piece of kit let's let's pop pop the lid by the way great action on the boot listen to this oh oh <laughs> hey mm, very nice action wow it's bedded in nicely oh come on did you hear did you hear that blooming it did you hear that wow now new rubber don't worry if you're fitting a new rubber you probably will you probably will do if you're building your mark three your boot will bounce for a while leave it for about a month closed and you'll be good to go promise you be bed in and you get better when i first did this it was bouncing like a baboon dousing itching powder but now those rubber seals from east kent trim they're worth every penny okay now then here we go some grease to go on the back of these so i'll grease these bad boys and pop up leave me with john travolta because that's the word that you heard the next clip you see i'll be bolting this on let's okay this is the cortina boot lock department coming up hold on while i take you through the lay of the land cortina boot then before the pleat goes on one lock set up for the key Okay, so that is set on Bramble's keys now. I'll show you how we did it. It's not too bad to do. We didn't have a lock for these keys set, so put that there. Let's have a look at a lock. Here's a lock taken to pieces. There's a little, little pin, roll pin that you take out first. I'll show you the roll pin now. Only small, as they tend to be. It's an occupational hazard of being a roll pin, is that you're born small. Roll pin comes out from that area there I just use my little side cutters to pull these roll pins I grab it like that and pull it out and that comes off after I've taken off this bar and the snail cam well, they, they self explanatory uh, 8 mil spanner undo the little bar at the back snail cam comes off little spring that sits in a hole just there then locates in the snail cam to tension it up but that's essentially what you've got. A barrel then comes out. Once the roll pin's out, the barrel withdraws. And this way you've got to be careful. It withdraws the wafers, the lock wafers. They're all slotted in to the, uh, the housing and the spring loaded. Can you see how that spring loaded? Let's get a side profile. There, spring loaded. The little springs can fall out, they tend not to, but they're located inside the body, so you've got to be careful. So get yourself a, a desk that you can see what you're doing, not like mine. So you've got six wafers, that's a wafer there. Six of those in the lock. And what happens, the principle of operation is, when you get the key, your key actually goes through the keyhole, Lloyd Grossman style. Like this each wafer has got a different slot in it depending on the way you cut that slot is how it behaves when it goes and rides up and down the key so a combination of the correct spaced out wafers spaced out wafers sounds like some kind of crazy drug biscuit will give you a completely flush profiled barrel if it's not the right key wafers are pointing up either end and the barrel won't rotate so the name of the game is to find yourself enough wafers to match the key that you've got you'll find quite a few are common and all you're looking at is different slots in each one if a lock is up too high you need to change it for a different type of wafer if it's too low down and pushing out the other side of the barrel you swap the wafers until you've got what you need reassemble them back into the barrel clean the barrel in thinners you can use either graphite powder or silicon to lubricate the lock graphite powder is probably better reinsert the lock into the housing put your roll pin in 
put your uh, snail cam spring on and then put a little hole on the snail cam onto the spring you'll tension the spring up slightly as you rotate it round it rotates round now and it locks on that's now under tension washer and bar yours for 4k and there we go you've got yourself an assembled lock and that is it that's all you've got to do it's quite easy to do you just need these wafers sometimes you can be very close with a wafer and it's like a millimetre protruding in which case you can just file the top off it it's not the best thing to do though but it can get you out of trouble but really you're better off getting the correct wafers in the first place I got mine by stripping loads of old locks that I accumulated off eBay and just kept buying locks and stripping them all so I had a good set of varying ones until I could get what I wanted but that's it, that's a, a Cortina boot lock ready to fit. It has a retaining clip here which you slide over it inside the boot and it locks into a little collar around the body. We also get off eBay a brand new washer for it. Look at that nice little washer there from eBay. Boot lid Escort Mark II Cortina 345. The good thing about the these locks are all fitted on escorts and cortinas right across the range so they're pretty easy to get hold of and work on. A nice simple unit to work on really. No big deals. Straightforward. Let's go ahead, fit the applique trim, I have to charge the battery up. And then that back end's getting that, that trim safely out of the way. So put put all these back into the bag. Don't need them now. In they go, safely away. And uh, we'll go fit the lock. See you in a sec. Okay, with a full kit of parts ready to go, we can now fit the lock assembly to the car. Let's get everything lined up and ready. We'll thread the lock through first. That little snail cam there just finds its way in through the gap. There's a locating tab for the lock itself, and it sits on that nice new seal that we've got. Then we can insert this. It might be an idea to grease this up, this lock. So I'll just get some general purpose on it. Just behind and off your screen is a tub of general purpose glue. So I'll just uh, place some into the lock. Just why not, you know? Just to give it that little bit extra. Right, so some general purpose has gone in. Now I just need to thread it through there, lift the lock out slightly, and there's a little locating hole that it's in. If I can keep hold of that, get me 10 mil. There, should just hold, which it does. 10 mil. Let's get the other side in. Are you still on? Just checking sometimes. I forget to press record. Okay, our key is handy as well. I'm going to make sure that it actually operates smoothly before I finalise with the locking pin. So, well, locking washer snaps on to the lock barrel from behind and just keeps that lock barrel in place. There's a rubber boot which finishes this as well. We'll fit that, that just slots over the later on the rubber boot. Just to stop you banging your head really, the rubber boot, and just to neaten it up. Right, nip them up, let's put the key in and just see that we've got an action going on. That feels good. Whoops, don't, <laughs> but don't pull the lock out. Right, can we clip that up? Clip that up, put the key in, and you're good to go. So that's nice, that feels good and smooth. Now here's this troublesome little clip. It's hard to get on. You've got to feed yourself in from the back. A right tricky affair this, always is for me, I'm probably doing it wrong, it's horrible, I've got to get in and get this clipped on, I don't like doing it, it's just, I'm wondering if there's another technique, I'm wondering if you put it, I wonder if, let's see, because that still comes out, I wonder if we can let it feed on as the lock comes in to make life easier, there will be a technique for this. Because they wouldn't have hung around at the factory. This we can be sure of. I just can't remember. 
can't see it. Oh wow, that's a tricky one. Leave this with me. All I'm going to do is put this clip on. The rest of it is, is ready. So let me struggle. I'll save you the pain. But I'm going to slide this onto the barrel somehow. There will be a technique. I'll let you know what it is when I find out. But I'm not going to leave the camera running for this. I put it to you that it's very easy. I put it to you that I'm getting old and forgetting things. You leave the clip on, you idiot. It's a one way. Ford weren't stupid. It's a speed of production. You're not going to have them fiddling in the back of that for that clip. So you do if you take it off. But to get it on, it's a one way affair. You just push and it'll just squeeze the lugs as it goes in. Look then pops out of course it was obvious I knew there was I, I just couldn't quite get it I, I think on Ruby I struggled and I forgot I think on Swampy I, I knew it just goes to show sometimes so there it is now I should just be able to just push down and it should snap in there's no reason why it shouldn't that's if we can get it to compress enough you don't want to push there you go. Wow! I'm glad that. I'm glad I. Re I'm glad I remembered that just in time. <laughs> that would have been. I just remembered. I'm sure it's fast on the production line. Boom! 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 One little clip. I don't really know what it's for, but it goes on anyway. Oh, why the hell they have that? It clips on the end of the shaft. Locks the whole of it. Oh, it's to stop you ripping the barrel out. That's what that's for. It keeps the barrel. Steady in the lock, that's what that does. That's it. Push that on. We're on. That should be it now. I've moved this, so we could have altered the. Hang on, let's nip them up. We could have altered the, the alignment of it, so this boot might not close like it did before with that nice action. It should do, but if it doesn't, it's because we've, it's because we've moved that. So let's see, I hope you can hear me there. Um, let's just see, I haven't really altered anything else. Boom! <laughs> okay, well, let's hope it opens. Oh, crawling in from the back. You go, yes. Right, Ruby's locking. Bramble's locking. Let's tilt you down. Whoops. Okay. That's what you want. Done. Now we can fit the plinth. Stage two of the operation. So we got it on. We, we remember just in time that lock just snaps in place. Of course. Okay, here's the plinth and these clips, these studs on it are renowned for rotting. So I've greased these up. This plinth's ready to rock and roll. So all these little mountain studs are terrible for rust. So treat them and place the plinth on the cart. It's got rubber backing pads on. I'm really probably just grease those so they don't stick to the body of the car. Grease doesn't attack paint. It's just, in, just to stop them fusing. They try and fuse. You never know if you've had to take the plinth off. It's just a bit better. So the pads won't sort of turn fuse into the paintwork. Right, that's it for that. Careful now. Uh, this way round. Careful. We go. Can you see from there? Yep, you're all right. Let's just get a couple of fix fixings in. Everything should line up. It's not lined up yet, but it should do. But we'll do there we go. Let me get a fixing on. We may have to adjust the boot um, 
to one more click on the boot opener because this now may tip the balance. I set it so it was just floating. It wasn't too springy. There's another connection. You can basically adjust the torsion on the torsion bars. One more click because this is going to make the boot probably a little bit wobbly around. 8mm for these little, hold on, for these from Bresco again, the proper badge clips from Bresco. A little sort of mastic lined, little knot with mastic at the back of it, a dry mastic at the back there. Let me get just one fixing on just to stop it falling off. One fixing is all we need now. One ticket please everybody. One ticket please. Let's just get a fixing. Trying to line the bolts up with the trim. And still with got it. We got it. Okay, let's get the rest of these. Little bit of paint. holes but it looks okay, a little bit of flex over all right. I think there's a natural bit of flex in the trim itself, probably storage, just to do with storage, it's not bent. 50 year old parts on them in your screen. I hate it when people pass in front of the lenses and they don't they're not attending to the film angles. That annoys me. Right so we've got to try and just get these last two studs, maybe I should loosen them uh, on the middle, just a little bit. Wiggle it, just a little bit. Might go across there. Note to self, move all its parts trays before you undertake said tasks. On. Just draw in gently, not too much force on these funny little bolts. Have a name for them. As I say, the line with like a, a putty type sealant as it closes up, squashes out. And as I said, Fresco Howard's your man. Talk to him, get all your nuts and bolts from that site. We're not sponsored or affiliated in any way, I'm just returning the favour. He's been good to me. Always a good service. There goes the battery charger. It's getting annoying that battery charger to be fair. Every time I'm trying to narrate. Okay. The boot is staying up, but I think it's it's hovering. I think that clip, that one's knackered. Let's try another. This one's okay. You've just got to get them to bite. Come on, bike. Go on, get on there. I'd love to know where my ratchet is. Got you. Oh, I'd love to know where that ratchet's gone. I only had it a few minutes ago. Things just disappear. I don't really know why. That one's gone. I 
Yeah, that's got a bit of a in that panel. It's okay though. What a, what a performance just for a bit of trim. Is that it? I think it is. I think that's all the clips. No more. Oh yeah, one more. There you go. See what I mean? Torsion bars, ladies and gentlemen. One click up, please. One click up. It's going to look good with this time. That's it. Woo! Right. I don't know if you'll be able to see this. Now when I close the lid, you'll be off camera. So come on down to my place. Make sure the keys aren't here. Keys, can you see them? Yes. Whoa, I definitely need to do that. There you go. Boot click. Up, off the jobby, off the magnetic table. There you go, we're starting to get it back. And view looking smart now. Okay, we'll catch you tomorrow. I'm tired and we've got my tea. You can hear my voice going. It's been a long day. Seven o'clock. So now seven o'clock. That's twelve hours straight on, on the car today. I'm tired. I'm going, my voice is going. We will recharge, get some good sleep, don't worry, I will. We'll see you tomorrow. Okay, there was episode 41, what an episode, and for a little bit of a 10 minute ramble because we're into two hours, so we're not, we want to bring you down nicely as we always do, and what better way to bring you down on your Friday night, possibly Saturday night, I think it's going to be Friday, some wheels, Bramble's got some shoes on as Lee Holmes says, some shoes, this is coming up in episode 42 where we get things really moving we're going to show you how we did this in episode 42 but to close everything down nice and gently I want to show you something a bit of OCD-ness okay switch on the car is on axle stands and I've set them all so it's all the same level for example 
the car is sitting square, true and level on the stands. So, okay, we've got 0 0.920 is completely, perfectly spirit level, but 0.9, okay? So, the axle stands and everything, they're all set on the same position, stay with me, on your little screen as we we're perched on the beach there, that's the apocalyptic beach view. The television's stuck on the beach with me staring at it, freeze framed. Okay, 0.5, almost level. There you go, look. So, the car within half a degree is all OCD, and for me, a way to wind down I do like it everywhere that you go you get that sort of uh, within the degree 0.6 look from the front if we go to the back whoops it's a bit tricky because we're right up against the, the shutter let me get the key out of the ignition I know you, this is on the small screen so it's not, you're not going to see this as easy as the big screen but I'll make sure that I put the the uh, clip fill in the lens of the, the of the tube. 0 0.6 we had, okay. The bumper. Now I just bolted it on. I've not even tried to do it. 0 0.1. Okay. The boot lid itself. Where can we get it? Uh, don't want to really put it on the on the um, the actual. I don't want to put it on the actual boot lid as such, but 0.3, So, what I'm trying to tell you is that I'm not even do the reg plate. It's how ridiculously square. This is 0.5. Remember, we had 0.6 at the front, so the whole shell just, just completely follows all the measurements that we did. Um, how about on the perpendicular? 88. Okay, we're not going to get that at 90 because they're the uh, the B pillars. They're not supposed to be at 90 degrees, but 88. In the same place on this side, 88. Okay, so everything, I mean everything, just comes in within a degree. And that's just pretty incredible. I mean, I didn't expect it to be this uh, square and true. I really didn't. I've surprised myself. I mean, let's try the parcel shelf, we have 0 0.6 through the actual, let's try, up, that's almost bang on, that's 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.4, everywhere you go, everything's square, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, I mean there's just, nothing's out, Okay, and remember on this episode, we really did go to town, opening and closing the boot, the plenum for the inside is also there. So I'll come into screen for you, get the selfie stick, but what I'm trying to say, the axle went on, you'll see it in 42, the axle went on, and it went on perfect. It just lined up, slotted on, so we've lost nothing everything has just lined up everything's square everything's true all the angles have worked which is a great result when you consider what we had to do with the shell so can i selfie stick now let's try i think i can so here we are at the end of a great day I've got to go and do some video editing so it's going to take me ages and that's why you're on a screen on the beach because down the city takes you 
down the city tech shows you you finish your beers oh yeah we're all legless out there who you are what is they doing so uh, i've been watching cortina city friday it seems to be uh every, every friday he, he, he seems to pop up every friday talking about bloody rubbish he rebuilds some more cortinas you know I've been watching it for a while, I've watched all the builds. I like to have a few beers on a Friday and uh, watch him build the cars. Cortina City is legless, you know, he's legless. Legless, like. <laughs> God. Hey, you might be, you might have had your tipple. So that is why we just like to end the show with a little bit of a taster of next week's film. A little bit of a chat. So I've talked about levels. There's quite a bit of rambling in 41. Okay, you have to stretch your arm out for these selfie sticks. This is a selfie stick with my own hand. So, um, yeah, it was great fun to do 41. There was a lot happening in it. And we got quite far with the car. So, we put a little clip of the beach intro if you remember that one we did the apocalyptic intros stuck the telly on there freeze framed me and that's why you're watching it on here so talked about levels you've seen that in 42 there's going to be the axle build and things are getting close aren't they we just need a door two doors we need a bonnet and then i've even been under underneath doing the prop shaft measurements We'll be covering those in 42 as well, how we get the prop shaft and the pinion angles done and all that. So this little clip is to wind you down, to give you a taster of the next episode, 42. There's going to be even more happening. And then of course 43, 44, road testing, the interior's got to go in, we'll fire the engine up and stuff like that. But everything's looking good. The engine does fire by the way. Do you want to hear that before you close tonight? Come on then, just to show you it's the real deal. We'll need some keys, wouldn't we? Hey, do you know what? Have I locked my keys in the boot? I don't think so, I just had them, didn't I? There they are. Those Lee Holmes keys. You can turn it over for the first time. Actually, I need to put this in. This is the fuse which controls quite a lot of stuff. It actually won't start without this fuse fitted. The interior lights come on with that fuse, but that gives me the immobiliser. Don't worry, taking the fuse out will not deactivate the immobiliser. As long as we're in park, which we are. Steering lock on, or not? Key the wrong way round? No, the key goes both ways. Okay. If you wanted to, if you really wanted to, do we get an oil pressure light? We should do. Not yet. I'm going to need that charging up. But you get the you get the message. You get the picture. Soon, in 42, 43, things like this will be happening as well. So we'll let you go. Thank you very much for watching everybody. It's been a 10 minute ramble. Just a little to Hazard lights? Are you crazy? Let's have a look. Did we cover lights in this episode? I think we did. We did cover lights in this episode. I think we, we jolly well did. Thank you for watching and the subscriptions. Just a little quick clip on the beach. So, we'll, we'll love you and leave you with the show. We just about survived the lockdown, didn't we? Is it coming to an end now? This All this lockdown business is coming to an end. Where can I perch myself? Can I perch myself here? Let's have a look. There you go. That's a good backdrop, isn't it? Yeah, I can see the car. I can see everything. So, we just about um, got through the lockdown, didn't we? And we've been having some good chats every Friday. The live upload seems to work. Don't forget to spread the word. We're going to get out of here now. Get to bed. 
It's late. Is it, is it hit midnight yet? I don't know. No, probably not. Probably about half ten, isn't it? Good night. Thanks for the subscriptions and all that. I'll leave you with a view of the car. There's Bramble. Don't forget to join us in episode 42, where you'll, we'll show you how we got to this stage with the axle. And for now, enjoy the rest of your beers. Wind down slowly. Horlix, whatever you want. Weetabix with butter on. Who knows? But we thank you. Patreons, YouTubers, everyone who else who inputs, everyone else who's input, subscriptions and uh, comments on YouTube. I'll try and reply back. It does sometimes get difficult to reply to everybody. I've got a lot of past replies to catch up on. But for now, PC is going. We'll see you soon. We'll see you next week. Over and out. Do not adjust your sets. Switch off in the corner. Over and out. Good night.